You know what? Tone if you want. Tone if you don't want. Oh, wow. Thank you. Oh. Sorry, Hugo. Oh. It feels like a steam engine. Uh, tickets and rail passes, please. <laughs> Hello, my name's Francis Bourgeois. This is a show where I share my passion for train spotting with celebrities. If you enjoy this episode, please press the subscribe button. That's the Pride Pendolino. <laughs> that was lucky. Thank you. Oh, oh, I sorry, can't I can't. We're here along the Grand Union Canal in Harleston, in amongst an absolute spaghetti maze of train tracks. And very soon I'm going to be meeting up with Ashlyn B. I'm looking forward to showing her where it all started for me and then understanding where her career all started as well. I was excited about meeting Ashling B and on the way to meet her at Wilston Junction I stopped to pick some blackberries, which have come into season early due to the incredibly hot summer. Same thing with walnuts. <gasps> Fashion Francis, excuse me. Hi. Hi. Tell me about your bag. Um, it's actually the old uh, district line look at. Oh my god, I love that. And I was delighted Ashling noticed my bag and wanted to show her my brand new fresh pair of suede Clark's Wallabies that I'd bought especially for our outing. Do you know what you remind me of? <laughs> it's like you're a train seat that's turned into a man. Oh, uh, tell right. me about these blackberries, please. Have you brought us snacks for the train? Blackberries are very hit and miss, especially in an area as polluted as Harleston. But thankfully, these were juicy and fresh. <laughs> no, it's good. Yeah. Put that on your lip for a little lip stain. That's what I'd normally do. Oh, I love that for you. Francis, what's our day going to be? So, so basically, when, when, we, when we're down by the Grand Union Canal, there's a boat there called Leighton Buzzard. <gasps> yes. Which is a, a really epic train spotting location. So I, I thought Please. I'd take you out to the countryside. So wait now, will we be going on a canal boat or a train? Uh, we'll be going on a train. <laughs> OK, fair. That makes a lot more sense for your brand. It was great being back on my home turf and remembering all the sights, sounds and smells from growing up. On, on this line, you used to have class 313s, which were made in, in the early 70s. And they just... It was kind of like... Yeah. It, it was almost like, oh, for God's sake, I have to pull into another station. And, oh, yeah. here we go. Another Thursday on a line, carrying people about. Here we go, come on. <laughs> I liked that Ashling really understood how trains could have emotions, but it was time for us to hop on a train to Leighton Buzzard. So it is my passion today to get as many beeps, toots and waves as we can possibly get. Well, I love a good wave. I'll I tell you what, um, Leighton Buzzard is the prime location for it. More like Leighton Buzzin. <laughs> OK, friends, we're going to have a great day. With comedy gold like that, I knew I was dealing with a professional, but I wanted to find out more about how Ashling got into comedy. To be honest, I couldn't really think of anything worse for me to stand up and do like a, a comedy skit. Where does the confidence come to know that you can make a whole crowd laugh? I like... think it's less confidence and more like a lack of shame. The thing you want to talk about just overrides the potential embarrassment of what if it goes wrong. Yeah, yeah. That's always been like the feeling, even in school and class, I was like asking a random question for no reason and it's like couldn't stop it almost sort of yeah. thing. So it's turning that into a career, I suppose. I'd always wanted to give sketch comedy a go, so I asked Ashling if she'd do a scene with me. Of course we could, yeah. Do that... you do any accents? We're on a class 350 at the moment. We're going to, to Leighton Buzzard. Oh, yeah. Your backstory is you came down from Scotland when you were a young boy and you got a job on the trains. <laughs> and it's the only place you found acceptance. So I think I'll come through the door there. Beautiful. Love that for you. And an announce that I'm co collecting the tickets. OK. What's my character's backstory? Where am I from? Can you do a Birmingham accent? OK. <laughs> I think that's the one accent I can't do. Go on, then. This was my chance to give comedy a shot. I went through the gantry into the next carriage to compose myself. Here goes. Hi there. Uh, tickets and rail passes, please. <laughs> I was sorry, I can't hear you, mate. I was underwater this morning at my swimming competition at my school. Also, I'm pregnant. Well, um, I'm feeling a bit sick, to be honest. Well, In the moment, I just couldn't think of anything to say. Uh, I'm going to have to get my supervisor. Right. I was stumbling over my words, and it didn't quite go as I'd planned, so I went back through the gantry. I also really hope I didn't offend any Scottish people. I mean, I don't think the BBC are calling us just yet. Before I had a chance to remind Ashling what channel we were on, we were pulling into luscious Leighton Buzzard. 
Well, I am late and buzzing. I brought Ashling to Old Linslade Field, one of the best train spotting locations in Bedfordshire. As we were nearing the top, a Class 390 Pendolino blasted by and gave us tones unprompted. We didn't even try. We didn't even try for that one. Maybe we were trying too hard. And can I say right now, Francis, just where we are, you are outstanding in your field. <laughs> Thanks. Here's a Pendolino. These are my seasickness boys. <laughs> hey! Oh, 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 oh. We've been really lucky with our first couple of trains, but that's when I spotted Ashling making a faux pas. Uh, uh. Um, if you're doing this, yeah, it's a big no-no. It's in the in the community. It's called tone wanking. Oh, I've been tone wanking all day. <laughs> you haven't even told me I was a tone wanker. I I've been giving it this, giving it this. Sometimes I've been double tone wanking. Ah, uh, uh, as the trains pass and by, the, just are... let me do it. <laughs> what I do is I, I kind of simple wave. Oh, we're simple. Okay. Now that Ashley had learnt to wave properly, it was time to put on the GoPros and watch as the trains barraged through the countryside at 125 miles an hour. Hello, sir. Hiya. We're not as odd as we look, I promise. Pendolino. Oh, Pendolino! Hello, politely. Oh, come on. Unfortunately, the next few trains weren't as happy to give us tones, and I sensed that Ashling was feeling a bit upset by this. You know what? Maybe I am a tone wanker. Maybe I am needy. It's a feeling I know all too well. The thing, you know, you, you have ups and downs, and it's the downs that make the ups so much sweeter. You know the way Ronan Keating sang, "Life is a roller coaster." You just got to ride it. I think life is a lot more like train spotting. Mm. Sometimes there's the ups and the highs of getting a sweet, sweet tone, and you're like, yeah. yeah. And then other times, something passes you by and doesn't even see you, and you're like, am I even a real boy? It can be quite saddening sometimes, because I do use train spotting as like a, a form of release and mm. feeling good. And sometimes when nothing comes or it's like, can yeah. kind of make... It's like a bad gig in comedy. Even though it inevitably happens, no matter what stage of your career you're at, you feel like you've let the audience down, you feel like you haven't gotten your high, your buzz. Yeah. I'm gonna be less needy this time. I'm like, you know what? Tone if you want, tone if you don't want. Oh, 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 that's what did it. I'm the problem. <laughs> oh, no. Maybe I'll just leave you, B. I'm, I'm getting in the way, France. I can see that. I'm gonna walk home. Unless well, you maybe say, don't leave. There's a freight train coming. You might as well see that. OK, well, I've always wanted a man to turn around to me as I'm walking away and saying, there's a freight train coming. Maybe stick around for that. Here he comes. Here it comes. Thank hey! you. Hey! It was like Ashling said. Sometimes you've just got to enjoy the highs of getting a sweet, sweet tone. <laughs> I really enjoyed connecting with Ashling over the highs and lows of train spotting, but I wanted to counteract this by taking her for a ride on one of the original forms of transport. Hi, ducks. So I know in Kildare, yeah, horses were sort of a big, a big part of your life there. Yes. Know what you say about like the smell of like. Um, being in a train station and that feeling like your childhood. Yeah. All of this is the smell of my childhood. I... Were, were horses utilised in Kildare for sort of farming as well? Like... Not really. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. the 1900s. So that's an insulting question. How big do you reckon the horses will be? I think they're going to be fine. Are you nervous about being on a horse? A little bit. But I'm, it's being around something that I'm not necessarily in control of. Yes, this is where our brains differ because I actually thrive in things I don't know what's going to happen. What's a horse going to do? Is it going to kill me? Yeah, why not? Yeah. All of this talk of death wasn't doing much to calm my nerves. Do you think those are our ones over there? I'll just put on my leggings and some flip-flops. If those were our horses, they were much bigger than I thought. OK, so who's done this before? Yeah! Who hasn't done this before? Me. OK, right. Well, let's get riding. <laughs> I was very nervous. I'm not particularly fond of large animals. We are riding Hugo and Bridget. Hugo's just here to work. So. Yeah. Hugo is here as a sort of train driver. Do you have any previous experience? Um, I once had a ride on a Shetland pony when I was about 10. OK. And it was called Turbo. And I've been a little bit apprehensive around bigger animals, you know. Ah. OK, if you want to come over and 
stand on the crate. You've got this, kid. I wish I'd worn more appropriate footwear than my brand new suede wallabies. But it was time to mount Hugo and see what this riding malarkey was all about. Hello, Hugo. Oh. Everything's all good. Francis, you look like a statesman. Abby, just stand up there for me. I felt like a statesman. The responsibility of being in control of such a powerful beast was next level. Yeah, I didn't realise it would be like a more of a rocking platform, but of course I'm <laughs> actually on a... A rocking platform. Do you hear that, Bridget? That's how he sees you. I'd love a man to describe me as that. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Riding Hugo felt like I'd been transported back to a time before trains. Earlier, this was the main form of transport before trains. Yes. It's only right that I connect with this in order to fully connect with the history of the railway, you know. I can see why people get such a kick out of horses. Riding Hugo in the afternoon light, his feet plodding beneath me, felt very relaxing. I feel like I'm, I feel like we're in one of those, um, like, Pride and Prejudice. So, Mr Darcy, you say that you have one sister and both of your parents are deceased, but you're a single man of 44. How has this happened? Are you that hard to get along with? I, um, I have on, uh, um, I still have lots to learn about improvisation, but I felt good riding Hugo and so wanted to go a little bit faster. Bit of a squeeze with your legs. Job time. Yay, girl. That's it. Try and stand up in the saddle. Use your legs again. Boy, Hugo. Come on, come on, Bridget. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Hugo. <laughs> Sorry, Hugo. I was having a ball on Hugo. Turns out riding a horse is kind of fun. You've done this <laughs> You're before. You're a diesel. Feels like a steam engine. Yeah. Rising and falling with Hugo's trots, his rippling muscles between my thighs, a nashling bee by my side. I felt a similar peace and freedom to when I'm watching trains. The huge powerful engine of a diesel locomotive in a regular control pattern wasn't that different from the powerful steed beneath me. God, you really left me hanging there, Francis, I'll be honest, musically. It's the end of the day, Bridget, and you've had a long day, and you're a horse, but you're a person too. Yeah, so what was what I was quite sort of anticipating throughout the day has actually turned out to be really nice. Yeah. And I feel like connecting with an animal that I don't necessarily have complete control of. Wait, do you mean me or the horse? Uh, the horse. OK, good. <laughs> well, Mr Darcy, until we meet again, um, I've enjoyed this thoroughly, but I'm going to have to leave. Goodbye, Bridget. Goodbye, Hugo. Goodbye, Francis. Goodbye, Ashlyn. Goodbye. Uh, uh, one last tone wang for the road. It had been a fantastic day. I got away! From spotting trains at my old stomping ground at Wilsdon Junction to connecting with nature at Leighton Buzzard. And finally, learning about Ashling's past, growing up with horses. Love you. Do you love me? Sorry. Sorry, Hugo. Mind of the droppings. Oh, fuck yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> it's not funny, Hugo.